All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I hope you guys are having a great start to your fig season because here in the Philadelphia area, I'm having the best fig season, or at least the best start to a fig season that I've ever been a part of. And I don't think it's even close. I mean, you guys know that in the last month or so, I've been putting out videos showing you guys the commercial greenhouse I have access to. We have a lot of pot of figs in that greenhouse. They're doing amazing. They're already have, most of them already have main crop on them. These potted fig trees here are a bit larger. They've been inside that small greenhouse there behind me since about early March. They've been awake, they've been growing, they've been happy. They're also really doing well as, as well because they've got bravas that's setting, the main crops are setting. And so everything just in a container, if we exclude all the, pot, all the uh, in-ground figs, they're doing really well. I'd like to make the argument that even if I took away every single potted fig I have, which is well over a hundred fig trees in containers, and I got rid of them, or let's say I gave them away, I sold them, whatever it was, and I took them out of the equation, I still think this fig season would be the best fig season on record, and I don't think it would be even close. And that's really what I wanna talk about in today's video, is that today is April 24th, and I'm seeing incredible results that I don't normally see at this time of the year. And every little thing that we do now, even if it's really small, a small difference now becomes a mountain later on. These little changes we can do and, and kind of help our trees now in the spring is an exponential change later down in the road and it becomes much larger at that point. It may not be noticeable today, um, but later on in the year, you, that's when you really notice it. And so things like watering properly, feeding our trees properly, staking the trees and opening up the center, making sure they're pruned properly to get more light into the trees, all this has like a huge exponential benefit. And the, the one thing that actually could be the best of all of them is to give your tree an early head start to the season. And of course my potted fig trees are doing that, right? They're in the greenhouse either one of the two greenhouses I, I have access to. But the, the in-ground trees don't. None of them have a greenhouse. We did have a low tunnel set up to uh, simulate a greenhouse environment. But in general, all of the figs have woken up like two weeks ago or more. In fact, in the beginning, the first week of April, a lot of the fig trees started to wake up and started to leaf out. And ever since that point, I mean, it's been really warm in February, it was incredibly warm. The ground really thawed. March was about average, not great, not, not bad. April has been like the summer. And so they've woken up basically at the beginning of April and have been like growing in almost summer-like summer, summer -like conditions, combined with the fact that we haven't had any sort of late frost that's come in. And that's really the key, I think, for the figs is that if you can just give them a warmer soil, typically, you're gonna be better off. That's the key. Warmth is what makes them wake up. It also helps their metabolism and it's in the soil. It's not really in the air. Of course, the air and the sun warms up the soil, which tells the, then the fig trees when the soil's warmer, hey, it's spring, it's time to get going. But in general, if you don't have that warmth, you're just not gonna see a lot of the success that you may have in the spring which then adds up later down in the year. And so that's what I do every year in this greenhouse is just wake them up artificially. I mean, we all know that that's a big benefit. You may not have known that that's how they wake up. It's not really the light, it's the soil warming. Now, one thing I have noticed though, in years of having this greenhouse and putting fig trees in here, I've always played around with the, with the temperatures and this space heater really helps me do that. It helps me determine basically what is the, really the most optimal temperature for fig trees and how far can I really push it. And what I found is that actually it can be too warm in the greenhouse. If the soil is about 95, that's actually a bad thing. It gets too warm and the trees stop growing. They also can have other problems that I won't get into, but the opposite can also be true. If it's too cold, well then they don't grow either and you're trying to get near that 78 degree Fahrenheit optimal soil temperature so that they can operate metabolically at their best. 
just like us as humans, right? We have a temperature within our bodies that our bodies keep us at, with homeostasis, they keep us at that temperature constantly so we can operate properly. The fig trees are no different. They need that 78 degree soil temperature. And so with that, um, they're able to, of course, do really well in this environment. One of the things I've found was that even if I just wake them up early, in like early March or even in April, just by getting them an early wake up is a huge benefit because this heater, you don't really need a crazy amount of heat. If you just run this heater here at night around 50 to keep things a bit warmer at nighttime, that's all you really need. And these figs just take off. I mean, you can already see like, there's about eight or nine leaves on some of these new branches. There's tons of fruit that have set. They're just doing insanely well. Um, and the same thing can be said with these in-ground figs. And that's my point, is that just by getting them awake, we're having a huge benefit. And normally when these fig trees wake up, it's still rather late in the season. Like today is April 24th. They woke up the first week of April and they normally wake up May 1st, May 15th, June 1st I've seen in the past. I've even seen some stubborn trees, they take a while and they don't wake up until like July. And so a lot of that is of course because of the heat. I'm not gonna lie to you, maybe you could chalk it up, right? That's the whole reason why I'm making this video to just say, hey, it's warm. <laughs> it's been warm. But in reality, there's more to it than that. And that it's a lot of it has to do with something I have done and you can do as well, which is about preserving the apical and lateral buds. And I've talked a lot about this in the past. I've tried to convince a lot of people. I think it's starting to catch on with some people that, you know, maybe pruning my fig tree really heavily is not the best thing to do. Uh, maybe I should try to preserve these apical and lateral buds because there's definitely some benefits, one of which you can obviously notice very clearly right now in the spring. And all of you guys can go to your trees right now and look at them for yourself. But you'll see that the figs that have the apical and lateral buds intact, they leaf out at those locations quicker, they develop faster. And because of all that, they end up producing fruit earlier. Now, you could also make an argument that they produce fruit easier. So if I had, instead of these apical and lateral buds here, we're looking at this Campaneri tree in front of me, which by the way, has four new leaves that have formed on just the apical bud alone. Below it, on that growth tip is the apical bud. Below it are the lateral buds. They're just something lower below the, the apical growth tip. Um, but if you go even further down, the lowest lateral bud that's growing, below that, I would consider all of this vegetative. So the bottom foot, 18 inches of the growth, that's below the, the top foot of growth, you could consider, I would consider it vegetative. And it's not like, uh, you know, I think vegetative is really the word to describe buds that will never fruit. I'm using it in the way that it's less likely that they'll fruit. It's more difficult for those buds to produce fruit. Uh, and if they do produce fruit, they're gonna be typically later to ripen and they're gonna be at a lower fruit quality. And so if you go to your trees right now, you'll see that if you have a tree that was pruned and you took off all those apical and lateral buds, and but you left part of the tree unpruned, you'll see that the part of the tree that was unpruned is further in its development than the part of the tree that wasn't pruned. Now, what happens is in the winter time, when we do our pruning, whether it's from winter damage actually, or from just taking our pruning shears and doing it ourselves, there's no real difference. The tree has no idea, but we're changing the hormones in the winter. That's what we're doing. Every time we prune in the summer or in the winter time, we change the hormones of our trees and our plants. And so you could make the argument that, well, of course, when you do the winter pruning and you do a lot of winter pruning, you're changing the hormones in a way that tells your fig tree, it makes it less likely, I should say, it discourages it from fruiting and encourages it instead to grow. If we do this pruning in the summer, 
the opposite happens where we're encouraging it actually to flower and fruit and to grow less. And so there is that balance that's always in kind of harmony with our fig trees. One hormone's telling it to grow, the other one's telling it to fruit. If they're out of balance, we have a problem. And so these vegetative buds, as I call them, vegetative, even though they're not really technically vegetative, they, um, they certainly can, can fruit and they certainly can catch up in development to these apical and lateral buds that are already really so much further ahead at this current moment. Um, so it's not like everything's lost. If you already pruned your tree or if the winter did a lot of damage to your tree and it killed it really to a lower height, all is not lost, but just know that those branches typically have a harder time fruiting um, and they typically will produce fruit at a later date because they're not going to develop as quickly as these buds here at the top of your trees. But they will eventually catch up. And what I find is that because the hormones are different in those buds, they tend to grow really quickly. And so these buds up here may only grow three or four or five feet, but I have some suckers down here at the base of this Campanieri tree that will come up and will start to grow. There's about eight or nine buds down here that will, that will grow. And if I thin those out to about three or four or five, they're gonna grow easily to about six or seven feet in just one season. But they're not gonna have much fruit on them. And that's kind of the difference is that basically the higher up we are on our tree with the buds that we have, the easier time they're gonna have fruiting and the earlier they're gonna fruit basically. The lower we go, the opposite becomes true and that these suckers really have a hard time fruiting. It's not impossible, but every variety is different. Every person's yard is different. And so this is not really a simple, just, you know, simple thing of, hey, prune your tree or don't prune your tree. Although I think the best general recommendation is to limit pruning and only really prune your tree if you have to for size control, for shape, to thin out the canopy. Don't do heading cuts, do thinning cuts. Don't head back the branches. Thin, thin out the canopy to allow more light to come in there. And so, you know, I think that's really the main message of this time of the year and why we're seeing such great success. Our winter protection was fantastic. We basically, what we did for those that don't, don't know how we did this, is that we took all the branches here in 7A that I'm in, zone 7A. We bent them all the way to the ground staked them and then covered them with these wood chips here that you see and these wood chips insulated them uh, with the ground from the heat from the ground and it kept them warm and they got through the winter time now in the spring I plopped them back up we staked them to give them more light and more space to grow and now they're of course leafing out with all this extra heat we've been having here in the Philadelphia area and so that's where we're at with these trees, and that's really why. It's, it's not just, oh, it's been really warm, but we've got these apical and lateral buds intact. And it's been amazing, I think, to observe because, first off, they're so far ahead in their development compared to the other buds, but they're also just developing like a lot quicker in the sense that they're further ahead, that the tree is still, wake, is still woke up at the same time, right? If you look at the buds down here at Campanieri that are suckers, right? They're the shoots that are coming up from the soil, the soil level, they're just further behind in their development. And it's not like, oh, the tree just woke up later down there. The whole tree woke up at the same time. There isn't two different parts of this tree. It's all one, one uh, solid root ball. And so this tree here, is just showing a huge stark difference in development based on the bud. Now, you could make the argument of dominance and oxen, but if you look at the trees, and this is my argument, I hope you guys will do this right now, go look at some of the trees you may have that have actually been pruned, and so part of the tree was pruned and part of the tree wasn't pruned. And if you look at the part of the tree that was pruned, you'll see it's further behind in development of the part of the tree that, again, wasn't pruned. So that's what we've done. I think that's why we're seeing the best success 
possible. And so that's really, I think, in my mind, making it more clear that we have to be protecting our fig trees every single winter time, unless we have a really hardy variety in my current location in 7A. 7B, you could probably get away with not protecting most fig trees, especially the hardier ones. This variety here called Constans is also doing its thing. It got some nice Braba development there. There's about six Braba, three new leaves there. At least the third leaf is forming. Some of these other trees, again, they're really small and they're quite young, but they're, they're really quite far ahead. Um, the other trees that also survived the winter time are doing the same exact thing. Whatever survived, whatever has those buds intact is much further ahead than what has not, or what does not have those buds intact. Um, and so that's basically it. Um, the heat, the difference there in the buds, I wanted to give you guys that lesson. And then of course, we're getting these nice bravas too by not doing that pruning either. So thanks for watching this one, guys. Hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that like button. Check out my blog, figboss.com. We'll catch you guys for the next one, all right? Take care.